Howdy folks, I'm Darling Dasher, daringly darting down dark driveways. I'm Amber. And here are more dark driveways for us to dash down. Are we, are we like one of those? It's the reindeer games, you know, the reindeer have to have something to keep them occupied while Santa's delivering the presents. Oh, or so they're like pressing the doorbell and then running. Well, they're just kind of like having, racing each other down the driveway. I think they're just pressing the doorbells on all the households. They got the wrong holiday. <laughs> Let's get started. Oh, and folks, you'll notice that I am currently in the progress of changing up the background here. This is actually oh, a real background, so we don't have to use the green screen. A real fake background. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, because I do know that like the flickering around the uh, green screen did bother some people. So, I am trying to get that sorted out, but there will be some technical difficulties between now and when I get that fully figured out. So, let's get started. All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for not changing my dog's name when my new neighbor's child had the same name? I'm a 36-year-old male, and I'm the owner of a great pyre Australian cattle dog mix named Charlotte, a six-year-old female. I live in a lower middle-class suburb in an unspecified place in the United States. I have lived there for about a year now, and I let Charlotte out to go potty roughly six or so times a day. It's always the same routine. I open the back door, Charlotte runs outside to pee, and then patrol the yard. Apparently it's a pyre thing. And doesn't typically come bounding back to the door until I poke my head out and I call her name. Well, about a week or two ago, maybe longer, I don't really notice, a new neighbor moved in across the back alley. I had no intentions of interacting with them whatsoever. Like ever. Except today, when I was executing the last step of Charlotte's aforementioned potty protocol. I stuck my head out and I called her name, but this time, alongside the familiar sounds of my dog galloping up the porch steps, was an adult human voice shouting something along the lines of, Why are you calling my daughter? At first, I thought it might just be my new neighbors getting into a spat, until a couple of minutes later, I heard pounding on my front door. I opened my door to find an angry man about twice my size glaring down at me. He said something like, Why the F are you calling my daughter into your house? And I responded, is your daughter's name Charlotte? And he just kind of kept glaring at me. In the absence of a response, I followed up with, Charlotte is my dog's name, dude. And he rolled his eyes at me and said, I better change my dog's name because he didn't want his daughter, a two-year-old female, getting confused and running into my house. I told him that's not going to happen because not only did my dog have the name first, we also have lived here first. Plus, I don't like strangers making demands of me before even attempting to be polite. What I didn't say, but I really wanted to say, is that teaching his child stranger danger is his responsibility and not mine. He called me dumb and said that a human child obviously has priority over a dog's name. I shut the door in his face and stared at him through the peephole for a moment before he eventually walked back to his house. Last potty break, I went out with Charlotte and stayed in the yard with her until she finished her business. But this guy kind of stood in his yard with his arms crossed and glared at me the entire time. All right, folks, what do you think? Not the jerk. I mean, it's a fact of life that occasionally other people or other people and animals will share names. Yeah. And like when I was in middle school, the girl next door to me, one of them, her name was Amber. And did it cause some mild confusion occasionally? Sure, but we pretty quickly figured out we would call her by her full name or I had a nickname I went by sometimes. We were able to work something out where it wasn't confusing. Yeah. So he could easily, you know, call his daughter Charlie or some other nickname. Well, and I mean, I think also the fact is that he needs to kind of teach his daughter that there are going to be people with her same name. Mm -hmm. What happens if this hadn't been a dog, but had been his own daughter, for mm -hmm. instance, right? Is he going to still get mad that he's calling his daughter into the house? I, I think that this is kind of absurd that he is getting this mad about this. And he mm -hmm. just seems like he's a bully who's always gone his way mm -hmm. by intimidation. And I think that if OP feels uncomfortable with him, then maybe OP can uh, start the process of putting a restraining order on him if he continues to make threats against OP. Yeah, well, definitely the neighbor's behavior here is entirely inappropriate. And also, like, people don't give animals enough credit for their intelligence. Like, how confusing is it for the dog who's mm -hmm. been Charlotte for six years to all of a sudden, out of the blue, be called a new name? Yeah, the dog is not going to quite understand or follow that. And, I mean, I think that that would be really unfair to the dog. And 
again, like this isn't that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. The neighbor is making this into a huge deal that it doesn't need to be. Right. I mean, if he just keeps an eye on his kid, she's not going to be able to go wandering off, wandering off into Opie's house anyway. And two is young enough that she shouldn't be running around unsupervised. Yeah. And that's plenty of time, again, to teach the kid that they don't need to go running over to the neighbor's house when they call the dog because there's it's the dog that they have. And maybe even introduce the kid to the dog, and then that way the dog and the kid can be like, oh, I have the same name as this dog or something like that. Like, kids usually are actually all about that. Yeah, well, she probably would be all about that, which might be make the dad even more upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well he doesn't seem like a reasonable individual yeah can i go play with charlotte daddy <laughs> yeah. well let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck all right folks and our next letter is titled my husband is a 34 year old male and i'm a 36 year old female and we are disagreeing on whether the nanny should live with us or not i'm a 36 year old female and my husband is a 34 year old male and we have three children two boys and a girl eight five and three well, last year I got a back and shoulder injury that makes it impossible for me to lift anything even remotely heavy. This includes our children. We hired a nanny who helps out. My husband and I both work. Our nanny, Katie, gets here at 7.30 a.m. and helps the kids get ready for school. Elementary for our 8-year-old, UPK for our 5-year-old, and daycare for our 3-year-old. I leave for work at 7.45 and my husband leaves for work at 8.30. The kids are all on their buses by 8.45. Katie then picks up the little ones from school at 2 and gets our oldest off the bus at 3.30. I am home by 4, my husband is home by 5.30, and Katie usually helps out with dinner, giving the little ones a bath since I can't lift her. She usually is gone by 6.30 or 7. My husband recently approached me about having Katie live with us. Apparently, she told him that the lease on her apartment was going to be up soon, and that he thought that since she spends so much time here, and we have the room, that it was a smart idea for her to stay with us. He also said that he feels better knowing that there's another adult who can pick up the kids in case of an emergency that arises at night, or when he's not home. I don't think that's necessary to have Katie live with us full time. I think that I would feel very awkward having someone who isn't my family living with us. I enjoy my privacy and being able to relax at night and when I'm not at work. And I feel as though having Katie there would make me feel very uncomfortable. When I brought this up to my husband, he got very annoyed and said that he already made the offer to Katie, so it was already basically a done deal. I tried to compromise with him and say that Katie could stay over if there would be days that he wasn't home, which is rare. But he is still very annoyed and says that I'm being unreasonable. Does anyone have any advice on the situation? All right, folks, what do you think? Uh, I think OP is well within her right not to be comfortable with the situation. In a partnership, you make decisions together. You don't get to be like, oh, yeah, by the way, I told the nanny that she can move in with us without consulting you. Too bad. So sad. Yeah. I mean, aside from rampant speculation on my part, (laughs) I think that this was unreasonable for him to make this unilateral decision without Mm -hmm. consulting OP. I think that it shows that he doesn't respect her or respect her needs for privacy. Mm -hmm. And certainly I can understand the benefit of having a nanny, especially in a situation where there might be a need for another adult. I I really do. But there are also other factors here that make me question Mm -hmm. his motives. Yeah. He seems doesn't seem to like the idea of Katie spending the night only when he's not here, Mm -hmm. which would make a lot more sense because he's an able-bodied individual who is able to help with the kids in case of an emergency, right? But he seems turned off by the idea that, oh, it's not going to be all the time, Mm -hmm. which I think is a perfectly reasonable compromise. And I do, like, it might be hard for Katie because the cost of living is high, certainly, and uh, those kinds of things, but this this is a pretty big step to move into somebody's house, too. Right, and it can complicate the employee employer relationship. Like, there are live in nannies, and there's nothing wrong with that. But there's also a huge room for abuse of power because if the person you're living with is also your employer, like they can potentially exploit that situation. Yeah. I mean, I speculate, like, say, for instance, suppose this is not as altruistic of OP as OP's husband, as he makes it sound like, and that he has other intentions with Mm -hmm. the nanny. She wouldn't really be in much of a position to refuse if her whole livelihood 
depends on him, mm-hmm. right? Then that makes a very uncomfortable employee uh, relationship with him, and you know, uh, employer-employee relationship. And I think that that's really important to consider here because if her whole housing situation depends on their kindness mm-hmm. and that they could kick them out at any time or something like that. What uh, what recourse does she have? Like, I mean, that's that's not a good position to be in. Yeah, it's not a good position for her. It's not a good position for OP. Yeah. Like, it just seems like OP's partner is being very inconsiderate and probably very selfish in yeah. his desires. Yeah. And suppose that he is completely altruistic in this case. It's still was inappropriate for him to make a unilateral decision. Right. It would have been fine to go to OP and be like, hey, Katie mentioned that she can't afford her rent. Is there any chance she could move in with us? Yeah. But he should have accepted OP's no and should not have made the offer before even talking to her. Yeah. Or in that particular case, if she couldn't afford her rent, maybe pay her a living wage. Yeah. <laughs> and so that she can afford an apartment on her own. Terms. Yeah, I mean, exactly. So they could have, you know, given her a salary increase they could have you know even researched apartments to help her find one that's yeah. affordable like there's a number of things they could have done short of moving her into their house yeah but let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck all right folks it is tea time grab your beverages of choice i've got some tea right here and amber she has a joke what would you get if you crossed a watchdog with a werewolf <clears throat> You would get yet another jovial bob sign joke about a werewolf A very nervous mail carrier. A very neat... Yes. I suppose you would. I suppose you would. I thought it was actually going to play off the watchdog with something to do with, like, a (laughs) timepiece. Like, uh, 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 a werewolf with a regular cycle. I don't know. I guess moons already have a pretty regular cycle. And I have coffee. As if you couldn't tell that I need it yet. Oh, and because of our background, you can actually see a non-demonic oh, yeah. brownie today. Yeah, with the little, the cute little ice cream. No longer demon ice cream. Yes. So that's the benefit of not having the green screen here, is that we can actually show stuff. And, uh, yeah, I think that uh, the, this will hopefully work a little better. It's not quite there yet, but it will be there eventually. And just a reminder, today is the final day of the Black Friday sale. So if you haven't gotten your free ebook yet of Horoscope Volume 3... Make sure to do that before it's gone. Yeah. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy su- special Saturday, Sunday, Saturday. Said it, it's Saturday, isn't it? It's, it's Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy special Saturday. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please, have it a short poem on names. A rose by any other name might smell the same, but it could be mighty confusing to learn that new name. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye!